There's about 15 of shuttle style devices in Australia at the moment. Have a seat, right. have a seat. These are show and tell for the community. Touch and feel an autonomous future. Mm. Um, and they serve a purpose in that regard. But it's this that's the next generation, the actual mm. vehicles. So these are an entry level, this is what happens. So these would be good for us places these days, like airports. Airports, We're university take, campuses, yep, yep. and that's where they've been rolled out. Mm. It's, that, it's that last mile, first mile. Yep. The key with them is to actually get some science and some rigour around mm. what they do and how they do it, and then start to increase the speeds. So these shuttles can go up to about 40. That's right. Once they get to about 40, you, you, you know, it's a really good speed. That's, yep. that's enough. Um, yep. And um, so we can go back now. Yeah. That'll be good. Um, At 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, um, it's, it's the proving ground, if you like, for yeah. the autonomous space shuttle people so moving. running on? This is battery. So battery. it's all electric, yeah. zero emission. They plug them in at night, charge yeah. them up, and I run all day. Mm. Um, six, seven hours of charge. Um, and the data that's collected off them is just fantastic. So how close they are to objects, how many people yeah. in them. Yeah. So RAC in Western Australia have got two years of data on road. They're the most advanced Great in the country. Transport. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that first mile, last mile. From the train station to the university, train station to the shops, yeah. um, those sorts of journeys are really, really good. Thank you very much. No well problem. Appreciate Thank it. Got to stay with everyone. Running out of anybody. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for that. No problem. Thank Appreciate you. It was a pleasure. So we'll come into the building. Very good. This is the, the National Transport Research Organisation. This is the National Transport Research Centre. So we re we've rebranded and reset the organisation. So the front of house is all about providing the infrastructure community of Australia with a destination. Yep. So all these meeting rooms, all interchangeable, um, we've got capacity to deal with 300 people in this open space. How so many it's, people do you have here? Um, in the office we've got about 108 yeah. staff, yeah. capable of holding 130 people. Mm. So we, we are open it up to others to use. So Vic Roads can come here and do project work. Yep. We've got Amy Gillette Foundation who you'll meet outside to do other things. We've got an, a library. So we are the National Interest Service for Road and Rail in Australia, yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. So our library is, is who we are. 58 years of knowledge. Mm. This is what the taxpayers of Australia have paid for. This is our heritage mm. and, and I've put it on display front of house <laughs> to make yeah. sure people know that it's tangible. Yeah. You know, yeah. We actually do real things in this yeah. place. We've got the best, the best safety team in the country exist here. So the universities have got a person here or there. Blair and Michael Ciotis have got a team of people yep. that go everything from design to all the way through to retrofitting, human behaviours, yep. safe systems approach. This is where the knowledge of the country resides yep. for safety in the infrastructure space, yep. right in this building with these people. So we have our own webinar room. So we're going to pop in here and uh, James Goodwin, who is the CEO of yeah, AMCAP, no, is, yep. is on alive. Oh, good. So we're going to go and talk to him live. Perfect timing here, we've actually just had a, a special guest come on in, um, our Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, was coming in, so welcome. Great to be here. Welcome to Deputy Prime Minister. We're just going to pass him up, so bear with us everyone, I hope you don't mind, we actually haven't had our launch going on for our new Port Melbourne office in the hub, so we have the Deputy Prime Minister launching it. Good. Well, thanks, um, Deputy Prime Minister. We've just been talking about um, new autonomous uh, technologies, autonomous emergency braking and technology like that. Um, I think perhaps a, a question, perhaps, uh, do, you, do you see a, a time where we might see a full driverless future? Well, look, it's uh, from what I've seen today, it's uh, you know, not too far away in one sense, but uh, in another sense, we've got to get the, the regulatory uh, processes in place. Uh, but uh, the technology that is already out there and uh, you know, the, the safety mechanisms by which uh, you know, companies are investing a lot more money. Uh, it is the way of the future. It's uh, almost George Jetson type stuff, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not too far away. Yeah. It's a big change from how we've formerly operated. We were in this 1970s building, little boxes, no connectivity. So we've now got full staff connectivity in everything we do. It's just a great space. You know, full staff space gets used all of the time. Yep. And then we've got this great outdoor space. 
And what, what, what we've got for you today... that's not real grass. No, no. What we've got today is we've been focused on the three-dimensional space because yep. roads are no longer a horizontal space anymore. It's a three-dimensional. So drones, horizontal space, and then tunnels. So Ronnie is one of our bright new post-doctorates. Post nice to meet you. Um, you what we've got today is a, um, a drone example for you of right. some of the changes that we can occupy the 3D space. Yep. Ronnie, what are we going to see when we walk outside? Yeah, so what we're going to show you today is a little bit of a demonstration of a project in which we are actually investigating the use of drones to deliver medical equipment as the first responders to locations of medical emergencies. So uh, for instance, if someone has a cardiac arrest, every minute that passes by without getting help actually reduces their chance of survival by 10%. So oh, how many? 10%. Yeah. Every minute. So every minute. it's yep. really important to get there as fast as possible and we see the opportunity to use drone to do just that. So why don't we to go outside and see that? I'll talk to you a bit more details about the project. So I, I fund a uh, CEO innovation fund at ARP and this is one of the innovation projects that staff got up last year to, to fund, to test the technology, to actually give it a go, to make it happen. Um, so drone lands, people come on. Assessing the technology, whether you can actually do the job, so whether you can carry the equipment, whether you can actually fly beyond the visual line of sight of the pilot, and whether you can fly automatically. I guess that makes sense once it's too big yep. beyond the visual line of yep. Jackie, do you want to tell us about what this is? Um, so what we have is a drone that can do deliveries yep. and that also may be further um, when technologies advance further for beyond visual yep. line of sight. What we can do, we can deliver on site, we can get eyes on an accident scene, yep. so then we can identify if more ambulance needs to be called or fire or, or whatever it may be, and it can deliver products um, like heart starters, radios, mm. snake bite kits, or whatever, whatever's needed as well. So if this was, say, in a remote part of bushland, mm -hmm. or, or indeed uh, you just couldn't get the ambulance there on time, a, a, a person who was with the, the victim at the time could get on the two-way and be talked through what they might need to be able to do? Yeah, definitely. That's the whole... Mm -hmm. And also, if we link in with, say, some of the projects like what um, Ambulance Victoria and that are already doing with their Good Sam mm. project, mm. Um, they already have identified where the people that are trained to do, so they can get them to that scene, but they'll have an AED ready mm. to, yep. to use as well. Um, and what the drones would be based in those prime areas, say if yep. there's large accident scenes, they could be placed all around and operated remotely. Yep, yep. Um, so then they can get to those scenes within minutes. Yep. You don't have to have ambulances on every corner, you don't have to have mm. people. You can actually do it independently. Yep. It's, just, it's the future right yep. here, right yep. in front of us. So we've got 108, 140 desks, and there's lots of capacity for expansion, and it's about building those teams, like the Amy Gillettes, Vic Rhodes, Federal Government, if you want to do projects, we can actually house your teams of people here. We've got this mezzanine. Yeah, yeah, we've still got room. So we've got this mezzanine that's got a high-tech laboratory, high-tech what we call innovation labs upstairs. Hello, hello. So this is the this is the first of its type anywhere in the world where the laboratory and the office are one. And what we've done is we've lifted the lifted the standard, lifted the quality, changed the fit, yep. and we've really got an opportunity here to do next generation material science. What are we going to be making our infrastructure out of in the future? How does it talk to each other? How are we going to incorporate have plastics? You, have you had a look at that? Um uh, the Wagner's uh, yep. airport yep. in Toowoomba. Yep. They've made that out of uh, almost sulphurless concrete, less concrete, whatever whatever the case might be. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's mm. right. So that's, those technologies are tested here. So, Technology. so that's crumb tyre rubber. Yep. And that gets incorporated into, into bitumens, which gets incorporated into asphalts. Yep. Twenty percent by mass can deliver you. 50% thinner pavement mm. with the same quality of life. Mm. It's quite remarkable. These are your, your styrene, butadiene styrene particles that go into asphalts to make them very stretchy, easy to, and your, and your elastomer Bend. pellets, the same thing. Yep. It's, it's just the next generation of technology for us is then how do we take the waste stream from plastics, get them into a form that's usable, that we then just add with bitumen. It's just <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no. It's a pretty high viscosity 
product. Um, so spray seal, so this is a typical rural and regional road. It is. Um, the technology behind that we are world leaders in, build, build but we're losing today. the skill the old, sets. The old days yeah. it was build them today and patch them tomorrow. Yeah, we're losing the skill sets across yeah. the country. So for us, it's about reinvigorating the skill sets, doing it differently, understanding the bitumens better, because we're importing bitumens from a different part of the world nowadays. Um, China, Indonesia. It's, it's all coming out of Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. it's all Singapore now. So it used to be the um, Saudi Arabian crudes that we used to get. It switched to Singapore about a decade ago. Mm. New ranges of bitumen, so high modulus asphalt bitumen. So to give you a really practical example, the Karoi Karup Part D mm. that mm. you're just in the process of funding. The Gimpy Bypass. That's it. This asphalt is going to be used Oops. in that project. It's going to save you $7 million. Yeah, right. Because you can build it in a thinner layer yeah, okay. and it's a higher strength material. Yeah, right. That's ARB research yep. in partnership with the Department of Transport and Main yeah, Roads right. delivering some real outcomes. Yep. So we've got all the latest gear from all over the world to do the slab compaction, testing of these devices. Um, so we test these, test these beams to work out their, their cracking strengths so that we know when heavy vehicles go over them what it takes to break them so we can mm. build build the pavement and the structure suitable to have a heavy vehicle. So this loads like this. It's called a called a fatigue test. Like so you, you load it like. load it until it cracks. Yeah, and when right. it cracks it, it it's the end so of is life. Is that working at the moment? Yes it is. Yeah, right. So this is this is the best laboratory in the country and the integration with the office means it's unique in the world. So our testers don't sit in some dirty lab out the back somewhere or our testers sit no. in the office. It's, it's, it's a, and in every workspace, we've got blank benches deliberately, vacant benches so that the universities can come in. Okay. We've got Monash, Melbourne, RMIT, Swinburne, all here today, yep. all bringing masters and PhD students to get in and, and make things happen. IPAVE, Intelligent Pavement Assessment Vehicle. Um, it's unique in Australia, it's unique in the world, and developed and built by AWRB. So what it does at 80 kilometres an hour, it has a laser that sits, a series of seven lasers that sit in a beam that measure the deflection or the strength of the pavement under the rear axle. And then with the lasers on the back, it does all the cracking and rutting and profile, all without traffic control, all at 80 kilometres an hour. So it works off, mm. off the beam on the side there. So we've now sold these into Germany, England, China, in the US um, and just recently in Denmark. So it's used in every state in Australia except Victoria. Just tell them. Yeah, it's a, it's a really high tech piece of gear. We've just brought this vehicle online. This is our um, iSAVE intelligent safe surface assessment vehicle. So it, it does skid resistance. So this is the international standard for skid resistance, comes so out of the they, UK. How do they test this sort of thing? So out on, a, out on any road, any road. So you drop the wheel down, run it at the angle, yep. puts the water underneath, and it, and it measures the skid resistance of the road. So on curves in country, country rural and regional Australia, 40% of people are killed by runoff road deaths. We can test the skid resistance of those roads. The local councils know where their problem areas are. They yep. just don't have access to the tools. We've got the tools. We now need to get them out access there. Access to the roads. Yep.